Yo, what's going on everybody? So in today's video, I gotta explain updater functions in React. An updater function is a function passed as an argument to set state, usually. For example, I have a setter function for a year. If I need to increment my year by one, I would just add plus one to year. This does in fact work, but a better practice would be to pass in an updater function as an argument. Usually this is represented as an arrow function. By passing in an updater function, this allows for safe updates based on the previous state. You typically see updater functions used with multiple state updates and asynchronous functions. It is a good practice to use updater functions whenever possible. So in this basic example, I've made a counter program. We can increment count, decrement count, and reset count. Within each of these functions, I'm taking my state variable of count adding plus one, minus one, or setting count to equal zero in the case of reset. I don't want to increment once, I would like to increment twice. I will take set count, update the state again using count plus one. This is different from me adding two to count. I want to increment count by one twice. I will set the state account twice, count plus one, then count plus one. If I attempt to run this, I will increment count twice with every button click. However, our count only increases by one during each button click. I'm very persistent. Let's try and set count again. Because you know, the first two times didn't work. During each button click, I would like to increment count by one three times, but we're still only updating by one still. Here's the reason why. We're using the current state of count to calculate the next state. After using a setter function, this doesn't trigger an update. React batches together updates for performance reasons. You would imagine that after these functions, we would update. But that's not necessarily the case. Using React, we batch together these state updates for performance reasons. In reality, it's going to look something like this. We're taking count, which is zero, adding one to it. Count did an update yet. It's still zero add one to it, take count, which is still zero because we didn't update, add one to it. In reality, what we're doing is setting count to be one three separate times and then updating. This would be similar to me hitting the refresh button on my web browser a bunch of times. We've sent a bunch of commands to refresh the web browser, but we may only end up refreshing once, not each time I click the button. That's because our web browser has its own event loop cycle. That's a similar way of thinking about it. If for some reason you need to use multiple state updates, you'll want to use an updater function. Here's how. We're going to write a function. Our function has one parameter, count in this case, arrow, then do this. Let's write an arrow function for each set count. So this will work. However, you'll want to rename count to be something else. We're going to be working with the previous state of count, not the current state. We're using the previous state of count to calculate the next state. According to the React documents, you'll want to rename count as either something like previous count such as this, or you can take the first letter of the state variable, in this case C. I find taking the first letter of the state variable much more easier to read. It's less verbose. So this will work then. When I press the increment button, we're updating the state three separate times. C represents the previous count, not the current count. With our updater function, we're taking the pending state to calculate the next state, not the current state. We don't update until later. When we pass in an updater function, we're adding all of these updater functions to a queue. A queue is a type of data structure. A queue is similar to a bunch of people waiting in line. It's first come, first serve. The first person in line is going to be helped first. So during the next render, it will call all of these functions in order, rather than batch them all together. When using multiple state updates, you'll want to be sure to use updater functions. It is good practice whenever possible to use updater functions, just for consistency. 
even if you're only going to update the state once, it would still be good practice to use an updater function. It will help future-proof your code in case you ever need to update the state again. So now let's take our decrement function. Currently, we're updating the current state of count, not the previous state. Let's begin by setting up a parameter of count. Arrow, then do this. But we'll want to be sure to rename count, just to show that we're working with the previous state, not the current state. Let's rename count as the first letter of the state variable, which is C. C, arrow, take C, minus one. Let's do this two additional times. Now when we increment, we will increment three separate times. And we can decrement three separate times. Now last, we have reset. With the setter function, we're not dependent on the previous state. All we're doing is setting count to be zero. If I was going to use an updater function, it would look like this. C, arrow, C equals zero. We really don't care about the previous state. This would still technically work. We don't really need our count for anything. We're setting C equal to zero because by passing in zero, we're already setting it to be zero. In this specific example, an updater function wouldn't be necessary because we don't need the previous state. All right, everybody, so those are updater functions. It's a function passed as an argument to set state, usually. When updating a state variable, you'll pass in an arrow function. If we were working with a state variable of year, I would pass in an arrow function that looked like this. We have a parameter of y, arrow, let's take y plus one, if I was incrementing our year by one in this case. By using updater functions, they allow for safe updates based on the previous state, not the current state. This allows for multiple state updates and is used with asynchronous functions. It's a good practice to use updater functions whenever possible. We will be using updater functions in the future. And well, everybody, those are updater functions in React.